Well, good morning, church. Thank you. Uh, if we have not had the opportunity to meet, my name is Megan Maserol, and I serve here as the director of Serve Ministries at Covenant. But this morning, it is my honor to get to come around God's Word with you. If you have your Bibles, I would love for you to turn with me to Luke chapter 1. We are going to be starting in verse 39 today and going through verse 49. If you don't have your Bibles, no sweat. The verses are going to be on the screen behind me. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant, and from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Let's pray. Well, God, we are grateful to get to gather together and come around your word, God. And God, we believe that scripture is true. And as scripture says, where two or more are gathered, you say that your presence is with us. And so God, we just recognize your presence in this place. And, and God, we, we ask right here in the in the stillness and in the quiet of this moment, that, that you would open up our hearts and, and give us ears that are eager to hear whatever it is that, that you have for us. God, I pray that you would work and move in ways that only you can and that we would have a posture of humility to, to respond. God, we love you, and we trust you, and it's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Well, contrary to the popular phraseology of my childhood, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, uh, words hold a lot of weight. Talk to anyone around you in an honest manner, or maybe just even be real with yourself. And I'm almost certain that upon some personal reflection and authentic communication, that you're going to find that the words chosen and or the absence of words matter. And they've impacted you in one way or another. I mean, think about it. The remembrance of words spoken over you or the longing of words to be said that were left unsaid, those words matter. <laughs> they matter. And for someone like me who has a love language of words of affirmation, words kind of feel like they hold an even deeper weight in my life and in my story. Uh, especially in times where uh, confidence has maybe been shaken or, or great risk is being taken. Uh, I came on staff here at Covenant in January of 2020, almost two years ago now, which seems kind of wild. It has been a heck of a two years. <laughs> And me coming on staff here was the obvious next right step in, 
in my own personal faith journey, but I could not have predicted at all what this journey would entail up to this point. And while the year 2020 and beyond has been a journey for all of us in more ways than one and in more ways than we can recount, uh, for me personally and specifically, uh, this journey over the last two years has meant wrestling very specifically with a call and a confidence in preaching. As you see, when I, I came on staff here, uh, preaching was never something that was on my radar. I'd never done it before, and for a multitude of reasons, was not something I ever envisioned for myself ever. So, uh, when an initial conversation in my hiring process with Jason included the words preaching in it, I thought he was lying, joking, or like hopefully both. (laughs) Hopefully, please, please be both. Because I just couldn't believe that God might want to use me to do something as important as this. As standing up here on a Sunday and talking to you about this God that I love. It couldn't be true. This couldn't be correct. It couldn't be me. Yet, soon enough, I would find myself in the next right obedience step of my faith journey here at Covenant. And uh, I found myself on the Wednesday before I would preach for my first Sunday. I was standing here on this very platform. Me somewhere over here, Jason standing right there. And he was giving me some some guideposts, some insights uh, that would be helpful for me as I'm sermon prepping and prepping for this whole experience for the first time. (laughs) And in the middle of Pastor Jason sharing what I'm sure was uh, words of wisdom and lots of things that I needed to hear, uh, I began to panic. And even though I would like to believe that I'm a great actress, apparently my panic was apparent because uh, in the middle of saying whatever Pastor Jason was saying, he looked over at me and he said, Megan, are you okay? Tears. Just burst into all the tears, like the embarrassing kind of tears that you're like, I don't know if I'm actually sad or embarrassed now both, but here we are, like all all the tears happening. And through the wave of these emotions, I was able to somehow muster up the words, I don't know if I can do this. I don't think I can do this. Why me? Why in the world would God use someone like me? And right in the moment of my clear doubt, fear, panic, wrestling with a multitude of things colliding in together, God used... Pastor Jason as a, as a mouthpiece of, of encouragement and assurance. He told me, he said, Megan, God is with you. And he is faithful. And he's the one moving and working. You need only to rest in him and believe that he will work through your obedience to be used by him. And if me standing here even today says anything to you, I hope that it says that the power of your words can lead to belief. The power of words can lead to belief. And God's provision to give them through others at the appointed time. 
for such a time as this. And as we've been journeying with Mary these past couple of weeks through this season of Advent, we too have seen Mary receive an incredibly high call. I would like to say the, like the highest call other than Jesus. <laughs> and, and we have been walking through her process of, of response and surrender to that call. And so where we pick up today in the scriptures is we see Mary going to Judea to visit and stay with her relative Elizabeth. So why does Mary go to stay with Elizabeth? Why is she getting out of town? Maybe it's a couple of reasons. It could be a couple of things. One, maybe she is getting out of town as her belly is going to grow. And in the shame and questions that are going to come upon her are sure to come. And maybe she's just not ready for it yet. Maybe she wants to hide away for the first part of this process and not have to deal with that outside shame and questioning as she's wrestling through her own process of this reality. Maybe she needs to get out of town and clear her head again as she continues to process this call and reality. And I mean, can we blame her? She has just been told she's gonna carry the savior of the world. That's kind of a big deal. A big, big thing to sit with and process and reflect. Maybe she just needed to get out of her her, her known and her hometown and her home people and, and change of pace, change of scenery as she processes this. Or maybe she needed the comfort of someone that she knows loves her. And not only someone that she knows that loves her, but someone who is also pregnant at the same time and is also pregnant under divine circumstances. Mini backstory here. So uh, an angel also visited Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband. And, and this angel foretold of Elizabeth's pregnancy with a baby named John, who we would come to call and know John the Baptist. And And her pregnancy is miraculous for so many reasons and was simply seemed to be impossible because as the scriptures say and describe Elizabeth as very old and barren. But yet Elizabeth, as Mary enters into her home, Elizabeth is already six months pregnant. And so we can't know for sure Mary's initial motivation or reason why she goes to Elizabeth's house, but alas, she went. And and as Mary arrives to Elizabeth's house, there's some pretty powerful words exchanged from Elizabeth to Mary. I I want to reread them now. In verse 42, in a loud voice, she, Elizabeth, exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Wow. What profound knowledge and insight has clearly been given to Elizabeth in this moment, very noticeably from this interaction. And and what does Elizabeth clearly know here? Elizabeth being filled with the Holy Spirit, knows that Mary's baby is Jesus. 
Emmanuel, God with us. And with this knowledge, she is speaking a blessing over Mary and over her Lord. And and in the same breath, she's also recounting her own blessing. Elizabeth is exclaiming her own blessing in this moment that she gets to be in the presence of Mary and in the presence of her Lord that's in Mary's womb. And lastly, Elizabeth makes a declaration and a proclamation over Mary's life. She says, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And I want to, I want to pause here for just a moment because it's very interesting that Elizabeth speaks this belief assurance over Mary. Because what we have seen of the story of Mary thus far has not been evidence of belief, of full belief. We have seen a Mary who is greatly troubled at the words of the angel of the Lord. We've also seen a Mary who has had questions and doubts. And we've also seen a Mary who, in the midst of her doubts and questions, chooses surrender and obedience. But we haven't seen the totality of belief. And I, and I believe that's an important distinction to make. Because we can be surrendered to something without unwavering belief in it. Jason shared with us last week that, the faith, that faith is not the absence of doubt, but rather naming our doubts to God can, can aid in this strengthening process of our faith. And Mary has named her doubts and questions in, in verbiage like, how will this be that I am to have a child? I am a virgin. And, and then right before the angel Gabriel leaves Mary, Mary calls herself a servant of the Lord and, and invites the word of the angel to be fulfilled. But, but what she hasn't said in any of this process thus far is, yes, I believe that these words are true. And I believe that they will be fulfilled. I believe that I am highly favored from the Lord. And I believe that I have been blessed by God. Mary has displayed obedience that has led to surrender but not overwhelming belief that will sustain her. And then she encounters Elizabeth. She encounters Elizabeth who is gleaming with faith, is gleaming with full belief and assurance that Mary is favored and that Mary is carrying her Lord. Belief that God will fulfill his promises to Mary. How comforting it must have been to stand under the shadow of someone else's belief as Mary wrestled through her own. How powerful can the belief of someone else affect our own belief? Pretty powerfully, at least pretty powerfully for Mary. Because somewhere in the midst of being in the presence of Elizabeth's faith, coupled with the journey that she has already been going on with God in her heart and soul and mind, Mary 
is moved from obedience to ownership. She's moved from obedience to ownership. And we see this ownership in, affirmed in Mary's song, even in just the first couple of verses here. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Before now, before this moment in scripture, both the angel Gabriel and Elizabeth have both called Mary blessed. But in these verses, she finally displays ownership and belief herself of the blessing that has been given to her and the blessing that is upon her. How beautiful. And how important for her journey, for her faith journey with God. Because, I mean, think about it even in, in relation to your own story and your own journey with God. There is a drastic shift in, the pers- in your perspective and relation to God when your walk with him goes from, I have to do this because I need to be obedient and I get to do this because I belong to God. The blessing of belief is the removal of solely a a bent knee to authority and a replacement with the profound purpose of security. Mary is blessed because she believes in the God who blesses her. And Mary gets to enjoy uh, the peace that comes with full assurance that God, that the God who promises will fulfill all as he says and intends. And she has seen this to be true in the life of her relative Elizabeth. And now she gets to walk confidently knowing God will fulfill his promises to her too. What an amazing journey that Mary has gone on. And she will continue to go on throughout her life. Just read on in scripture. (laughs) It, and it's, it's so special to sit here together and recant and recall her journey of faith thus far. And while we can see and celebrate this movement in Mary's heart with God from obedience to ownership, I would be really naive to think that everyone in this room has come to the same kind of conclusion and disposition of that of Mary. Maybe maybe you relate to a different part of Mary's story. Maybe you're someone who is greatly troubled by the words of the Lord. Maybe or maybe even words that have been said to be associated with the Lord, and maybe they weren't. Maybe you're someone who has questions and has doubts, and you don't feel like they've ever been adequately addressed or answered. Maybe you felt like they've been dismissed. And maybe you feel like you've been shamed for even having questions or doubts at all. Maybe you're someone that decided to surrender to Jesus and would, and would call yourself a Christian. But really walking 
daily in this boldness and confidence and assurance in your faith and in God's goodness feels really foreign or far off. Your faith maybe feels more like nominal obedience than pursual ownership. And so wherever you find yourself today and in this Advent season, my hope and prayer is that God would meet you in this place, in this space, exactly where you are for such a time as this. And I pray that you'd you'd be honest with him of where you're at because the truth is he knows it anyway. He knows it anyway. And he can handle anything that you need to say to him. I promise. And my hope is also that maybe some of the words that you've heard today or maybe words that you'll hear by somebody else later would be of some semblance of that like the words of Elizabeth to Mary in her own wrestling. Or maybe even like the words of Jason to me in my own. That these words would be an appointed encouragement of what is true. So what is true? What's true is that there is a God that so deeply loves you and is worthy of your belief. He is forever faithful and always makes good on his promises. And the pinnacle of his promises was purposefully positioned in a manger and was called the Prince of Peace. And even though sticks and stones and thorns and throws tried to devour him and defeat him, death's distress did not have the final say. Our salvation was sufficiently sealed because Jesus made a way. And the offering of overwhelming freedom in the gospel is here to stand. And it's yours to own. And it's your blessing of belief to take. Let's pray. God, Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your mercy over us. And in the ways that we are keenly aware in our lives and in the ways that you are moving and working that we, we can't even see. God, thank you that... You came and made a way for us, not as the triumphant, powerful king. And in that form, but you came in the form of a vulnerable baby. God, the humility that you displayed for us is humbling. And God, I I don't even have words to continue to describe your miraculous power in all of our lives. And God, I pray that, that as we sit in this space together, that we would, we would just be honest with you. We would be honest about how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about you and and our relationship with you, God. And I pray that that would be maybe for some, like a beginning step of freedom 
or a reminder of the freedom that we have in Christ. God, thank you for what Advent means. Advent, we get to remember this long-awaited, this long-expected, anticipated Jesus. May we, in our remembrance, all hail the arrival of you, Jesus. And it's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.